that color. It's crazy. Now, why do you think risotto is such an underutilized dish? Um, I think because, especially in our community, like it is one of those things that's looked at as a high-end thing, but really it's just rice. I mean, really? <laughs> Take one more. Sip it as wine. Sip, sip, sip. Arsenio, you ready to get rolling? Yes, Chef Todd, you ready to get rolling? I'm ready. All right, we're going to be rolling in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Dope, Dank, and Dime podcast. JessePeak.com right here. My main guy, Chef Todd, in the building. We about to wow y'all with some amazing education and an amazing cooking session. So let's get straight into it. The strain that we are debuting today or that we are reviewing today, A Tale of Two Cities, Okay, reading is fundamental. We've got a strain called Chocolatina from SF Roots, from SF Roots. And before we get into all of the uh, dynamics of this particular strain, I want to remind y'all, giveaway, okay? We're doing a giveaway. We just need y'all to hop in the comment section. Let me know what your favorite strain is. Is it an indica or is it a sativa and what the name of the strain is? And from Santa Cruz Shredder, okay, We've got the Revelry rolling kit. This is a smell proof, smell proof rolling kit with hemp accessories. It's got all kind of shit in here. Ugh. It's nice and durable, odor absorbing and water resistant. You've got your hemp rolling tray right here. You've got a hemp grinder in here. You can put your product right inside these zipper compartments. So drop a comment on what your favorite strain is and we're just going to select a few people out of the comment section for the giveaway. We've also got a couple of their shredders and a couple of the other hemp rolling trays. Just let us know so we can do that. We want to keep y'all engaged and y'all having fun with this podcast because as we learn, y'all get to learn. Chef Todd, what's been up with you this week? Man, I'm just getting back in town, really. Where'd you um, go? I was in Orlando, Florida, you know, just visiting family. That's where I'm from. So. Okay, that's yeah, what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Did you, did you go? Uh, what did you do while you were down there? Um, mostly just, like I said, chill with family. Um, you know, I played a little bit of ball with some of my homeboys, that type of thing. But, you know, it was a work-free trip. for Work-free trip. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes you got to just kind of get back and decompress. Yeah. I did that on uh, Saturday. I didn't do any work. I went to the AEBL game. Uh, my cousin. I heard about that. Yeah. Uh, my cousin, Lonnie, not Zoe, not Alonzo. My cousin, Lonnie, hit me up. He was like, yo, fall through the game. Um IT plane, he about to shut it down and literally shut it down. Yeah, so we had a listen, down, listen, man. crazy. Had a bunch of fun. Uh went out to dinner uh afterwards to Aziza. Uh what you doing after this? Listen, we're going to Aziza. Okay, we're going to Aziza. I went to Aziza and it's crazy. We're in Atlanta. I eat all the time. People see it on my Instagram and whatnot. And because you be chefing it up, I haven't said, yo, Chef Todd, let's go grab a bite to eat right. somewhere. Cause I'm like, I'm going to take you somewhere. You can be like, man, why are you taking me to this bullshit? The food there is dope. So we're going to go check that out and For have sure. some fun. For sure. So let's get back into this SF Root Strain. Now, what we do here on the Dope Dang and Dime podcast, if you haven't heard, I'll give you the quick little rundown on how this podcast originated. On Twitter back in December, I see a tweet that's gone viral, Martine F. Pierre. She started a thread. She wanted to see more black and brown people get into the cannabis space because she's building an app called Canolution, education app. Right. And I had been wanting to start a podcast. I didn't know what I was going to talk about, though. You know, mm -hmm. I can talk all day long about random shit. Right, right. But I wanted to kind of, you know, dig into something. So one of the things she said that people could do on the thread they could be reviewing cannabis strains. At this time, I'd never smoked before. Right. And so I'm like, damn. This might be fire. And I know when you smoke, you get hungry. So I'm like, yo, cannabis, Gotta fine eat. dining. I hit you up and we link up and it's off to the races from there. It's off to the races from there. And you create these amazing dishes. So what I do is I grab a strain. Today we got SF Roots. I figure out 
and do some research on what the terpene profiles are on the strain. And just if you're not aware, I'm learning. Terpenes, let me give you the, the real definition. I wrote it down so I don't sound like a dumbass. <laughs> and sooner or later, I'll remember this and then I don't have to read it anymore. Uh, terpenes are aromatic compounds found in many plants. Though many people commonly associate terpenes with cannabis because cannabis plants contain high concentrations of them, these aromatic compounds create the characteristic scents of many plants, such as cannabis, pine, lavender, and as well as fresh orange peel. So when we get into certain aromas, the citrus from lemon and lime and orange, uh, lavender, right. when we get into earthy scents, terpenes are what give those things those scents. So if you're out there, get into the terpene profiles. Terpene profiles also have different medicinal characteristics. So, and actually, let me just give you all a little bit more information about SF Roots, okay? SF Roots is a premium cannabis brand born and bred in San Francisco. They're one of the first social equity companies, and they're dedicated to preser preserving the quality standards and culture on which the industry was founded. And they've got some really, really, really good information on, well, <laughs> I'm just going to read it to you. We only see a fraction of black, indigenous, or other people of color ownership in the cannabis industry. So many are still in prison on nonviolent marijuana charges. Social equity programs are necessary steps to the healing of a people. There's so many people that are sitting behind bars, and as me and you talk, right. and as I'm learning, this is a plant. Yeah. That shit don't make no sense. You got somebody locked up in jail over a plant, and me and you will talk later on, I'm learning some shit last night about yeah, the Indo yeah. endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. You know, we're taught in school about uh, the muscular system, skeletal system, circulatory system, the respiratory system. Well, there's an endocannabinoid system in our body. In our bodies. That they never talk about. And what's crazy is endocannabinoid. Endo is in there, and the word cannabis is kind of in there. Right, right, Why don't right. they talk about that shit? Because it has to do with cannabis. And I can't get into the details on it because I don't know much yet. Right. But uh, my homegirl who's a nurse was telling me last night, and she's a cannabis certified nurse. She's telling me that this endocannabinoid system has receptors specifically for cannabis. Mm -hmm. Like it's already in our body. Already in our bodies, yeah. So we're supposed to be consuming cannabis. And there's so many things. So let's get back into the Chocolatina strain. Okay, I'm gonna give you all some information. I did some research. Uh, Leafly is usually my go-to source on research on these strains. Chocolatina is a rare sativa dominant strain that crosses Tina and Minto chocolate chip. Its terpene profile is something special. You're gonna get a classic cheese taste with hints of pine and a finish that is sweet and smooth. They said make sure you grab it fresh so you get the whole experience. When it comes to effects, it tends to be extremely euphoric with a buzz that is more upbeat than sedative. And that's what I like. You know what I'm saying? Too. You know, I'd be vibing on a higher frequency, love to have fun, energetic. So something like this is going to fit well with me. It's great for wake and bake on a day-to-day -day if you don't have much going on as it provides mellow energy that's also a bit loopy. So I'm going to be around here bent and I'm sipping on this wine. Hopefully that pairs well with this. Right, right. Chocolatina is potent and hits hard. So proceed slowly and enjoy the ride. So... We about to have some fun today. You you uh you rolling up today? Or you just you just No, nah, I'm rolling up. I'm rolling up. Okay. And and as always, as always, my cannabis has to be rolled up in bouquet. Y'all seen this the right way? Bouquet. So I tried uh a few different companies' papers, three different companies actually, and they have, you know, raw organic papers for some odd reason, and it's not an odd reason. I talked to KC that owns bouquet. Their hemp is layered a certain way right. to where it's like a higher quality. When I tell you, you taste all of the flower when you smoking out a bouquet. So uh, for y'all that smoke backwoods, I'm telling you, s switch up. Right. I know that, and I've asked some of my, my homies, like, why do you smoke the backwoods? Oh, man, they burn slower. Yeah, but you're not getting all the flavor, so fuck all that. <laughs> Get a faster burn. Get all the good taste and get you some bouquet rolling peepers. That's all we're rolling up on yeah, on the Dope Dank and Dying podcast is bouquet. I learn something new every week. On yeah, it's, it's, it's fire. It's, it's fire. So the strain terpenes on this, okay? This weed offers a special terpene profile that includes beta myrcene. Okay, myrcene is the most commonly a common and particularly potent terpene. It's got a spicy, earthy, and musky scent that gives cannabis strains a mildly sweet profile. Now, some of the medicinal benefits of myrcene. It's better known as the active sedating principle of hops and lemongrass, and it's also found in basil, mangoes, 
and its namesake, Mersha Shwarakarpa. Okay, that's its namesake. That's how you pronounce it. This is a medicinal shrub from Brazil that they traditionally use to treat diabetes, diarrhea, and hypertension. Mm, I remember when I was in Seattle taking care of my dad, you know, he had multiple myeloma, which is a bone cancer. The VA prescribed him like a cocktail of like eight fucking pills. Right. Uh, one of them was for high, hypertension. One of them was for uh, high blood pressure, all kind of stuff. And I'm just like, as I'm doing this research and learning, he could have just been taking cannabis tinctures exactly. and things with the right terpene profile combination. And he could have been healed fine. So I'm not going to get into that too much because I don't know enough to talk about it. I just noticed that when I started giving my dad cannabis products, you know, cooking with him towards the latter stages of his life, he was a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Like, amazing. Right. Talkative, energetic, said he didn't have all the bone pains that he had previously. So it's uh, cannabis is an amazing plant. So we've got the beta myrcene. We've got beta caryophyllene. Caryophyllene is also a common and often abundant terpene found in cannabis. Its distinctive flavor contributes to the spiciness of black pepper and can be found in high amounts in cloves, hops, and rosemary. Now, some of the medicinal effects of it, okay? It's got potent anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, um, antibacterial, and antioxidant properties. It's also known to help relieve anxiety and pain and reduce cholesterol. You're getting that from a plant. It also prevents osteoporosis and treats seizures. We also have limonene, and limonene is my favorite terpene. Yeah, that's my favorite, too. Um, it's got that citrus scent to it, okay? Limonene is also known to combat mood disorders and cancer. It helps you focus and lift your mood. So those are the three terpenes that are in this FS root strain. Now, I gave you the terpene profiles. Yep, yep. What you figure out? So this week I I decided to go a little Caribbean flair. Okay. Um. So we're gonna do a uh, jerk marinated uh, grilled salmon. Okay. And then we're gonna pair that with uh, rice and peas, but we're gonna do it with risotto. So hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. So you know we gonna get so hold that. on. You gonna put peas in the risotto? I'm gonna put peas in there. Yeah. Wow. And we're going to, we, you know, it's going to touch on that earthy, the spicy. Okay. The lemony is going to be in there with the fresh lime. So, you know, okay. we're going to hit a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of notes on, on, on the flavor. Okay. That's what's up. Somebody that's hit that. me on Instagram and they, um, just for y'all out there, they hit me on Instagram. Um, are you, are, are the dishes infused? And the answer is no, the dishes aren't infused. And the only reason uh, behind that, when you smoke, all your senses are heightened. At least mine are. I'm, I'll be on 10. Different. Touch is crazy. Taste, smell, everything. And so when Chef Todd is putting together these dishes, I taste every fucking thing in them. And it's just amazing that we get to, you know, do this. So I'm going to get to rolling up. We're going to go in the kitchen and we're going to continue. Um, just so y'all know, if you have any uh, questions, comments, put them in the comment section and we'll answer them on the next episode. So if you want to know about how Chef Todd is cooking this, why is he using this style of uh, whatever process he's going through, or if you want to ask me some questions about what I'm learning about the cannabis, just put them in the comment section and I'll answer them on the next episode. All right, we'll see y'all here shortly.
Okay, so we are getting into the FS Roots Chocolatina strain, heavy sativa, my favorite type of cannabis. Let's go. Say you had a fifty thousand dollar budget, and a fifty thousand dollar budget, and that could be like astronomical for what I'm gonna, for what it, for what I'm gonna tell you, mm -hmm. like a dinner for ten. In a fifty thousand dollar budget, <laughs> yeah, off getting stuff flown in <laughs> from Japan, <laughs> like I'm taking it to a whole nother. They could be like, yeah, this dude here is. So if you could do that, mm -hmm. when? And you're saying that because these ingredients that come from other continents, places, are a whole different type of quality. Right. This is true. Um, so, you had that budget, and you could cook for anyone. Who would the group of 10 people be? Like, who would the... Who, who, yeah, who would, group, who would the, the group of 10 people be? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. We can stop at five if you want to. Definitely the Obamas. The Obama, so that's two. I'm inviting LeBron and Savannah. Okay, there's four. Jay Z, Beyonce. Six. Six. Uh, let's see. That's hard to. I'm inviting. The girl from Black Lightning, I can't remember her name. She live in Atlanta, but I'm inviting her. Inviting her, so that's What's seven. Um, Rick Ross. Okay, there's I need, eight. I need to learn some, some stuff from him. Okay. Now, okay, he, I'm going to ask you a question in a second. Okay. Okay, Rick Ross. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Kanye. Kanye. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, yeah, we'll stop there. They, we could do plus ones with them or something. Okay. So, Kanye ain't got no <clears throat> Rick Ross is in Atlanta. Kanye is always in Atlanta. Can can we uh, give them a Chef Todd experience on the house? Hell yeah. Like this week, we need to set that up. I can't even talk watching you do this. You about to sprinkle some spares. Mm. <laughs> y'all, y'all, this is like. It's a rice and peas risotto, jerk salmon, asparagus, and a crispy skin of the salmon. Crispy fried skin of the salmon. Oh, this is elegant. <laughs> Chef Todd in there. Chef, in, Chef Todd in there. I'm in my bag today. <laughs> <laughs> Like, can I go somewhere and get this? <laughs> and people be like, 
Hey, you want to go to a restaurant? Bro, are they serving this kind of stuff? I can do this at the house. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just somebody, shit. You know. Oh, shit. I'm trying to tell people. Oh. Man, just get the groceries. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's going down. Just get the groceries. Hey, y'all, y'all get ready. Y'all get ready, because let me tell you what me and Chef Todd about to start doing. Should I tell him about the, uh, how we going to do the shopping? I mean, yeah, you can tell him, you know, I'm going I'm to put him on game. That's what I'm going to do. Like, people don't know how to shop no more. Like, me and Chef Todd are about to start filming us going shopping. Man, I ain't going to lie, bro. This Fire. Not even high. I'm just like, <laughs> bro. It's the one right here. <laughs> Not the two. It's Not the, the two. One. Oh, shit. Okay. That's what's up. Man. Grace. Grace. Okay, let's go. Let's go. First of all. Bruh. <laughs> Man, listen. Mm. This it right here. Yep. Oh. I gotta take the, the crispy skin with it though. Let me see what it's working with. Oh, there you go. No, I'm good. I should have put more crispy skin in the uh like just throughout it. Mm-hmm. Or when you eat it with the crispy skin. Man, this salmon is so good. I'm sorry, y'all, that we're quiet. But when I tell you, this motherfucker got so much eloquence to it. Is el- yeah, eloquent? Eloquence? Is <laughs> I don't know. If that's elegance. Right. That's what I meant. Elegance. <laughs> Boy, I'm high as a kite. That's funny. Making up words. Eloquence. No, this shit is elegant. Man, just tell me what you taste though, like element wise. The dish is layered. Right. But okay, so tell me what layers you're getting. So in your risotto, there's a little. Hold on one second. Hold on. So I can describe it, right? Hold on. Okay. A rice mm-hmm. and a pea have a different consistency. So the first consistency you the first thing you bite down on is the rice and it, it's like then the pea has a different thicker texture mm-hmm. so you get that and then you got the creamy on top of that and then the salmon bruh this is jerk you cook this perfect well I was gonna say temperature wise perfect. And then you see like the balance of it, right? Mm-hmm. Having um, still having that crunch to the asparagus. Yes. You know what I mean, like, hold on, I haven't even taken one of the skins yet. You got to eat it with everything, because <laughs> then it gives you that crunch element, and it's just like, man, I'm gonna do that that way. Where I can hear the crunch. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But you see what I mean? How like but putting see, some more skins. But you tell me all the time, this is how you want people to experience food. Right, right, right. Like everybody you should, should be able to tell me, you know, all of these elements. If I asked you, mm-hmm. like I hate going to a restaurant and be like, okay, well, like what are you tasting this? And it's just like, it tastes like it came out of a box. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's not it's not intentional. <laughs> and you're firing up in the kitchen on passion and intention every single time, correct? Yes, sir. Ain't no other way to do it. Rick Ross. <laughs> the house. We round the corner from the house. Say the word. Chef I'm Todd there. in route. <laughs> in route. But boy, oh boy, this is uh what Arsenio said, scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> I could have that for dinner, like. I do three two, days a week. Yeah, I was going to say at least two or three days out of the week. I wouldn't complain at all. That's funny. 
I wasn't anticipating you to take off like that. Bro, you know what the crazy thing is? I had this in my head. Remember I was telling you about, it's crazy, like I was talking to my brother about, you know, just manifestation. Mm -hmm. And as a chef, like a part of my ability to be able to manifest, it's like I see these dishes, like I saw this in my head before I created it. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, all right, it comes out, this is exactly how I wanted it to look and everything. Hold on, hold on. I know you never thought about it like that. No, uh, let me tell you what I'm, that, and let me tell you what I'm experiencing while you're talking about this. Out of nowhere, I just got, if this makes any sense, a cool, fiery sensation. Oh, no, I get it, too. It's like, after I've eaten it now, it's like, it's, it's like a cooling, calming, but it's what? like heat on the back end. <laughs> What is doing that? Is that that? I think it's the the pepper, the pepper and the and the lime. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got the freshness of some of those herbs, the cilantro and that kind of thing in there too. So. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Yo, what you about to do for dessert? So we're gonna do a deconstructed uh, tropical um, parfait. Okay. Let's get to that. Hmm. We just had that conversation. He about to try something different. Because, like, because I realized that like and I was talking to another chef that I know um, from New York um yesterday. Oh, yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday. And we was just talking about how like again the same conversation we had, how people are afraid to try new things. They don't want to step outside that box, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, man, it's just, there's so much stuff that you can do on the other side of it. Right. Okay, T Chef Todd, they've seen it. Mm -hmm. They've seen it. But what is what is this dish? So this is a de deconstructed tropical parfait. Mm -hmm. So we got a bunch of fruit elements in here. We got some dragon fruit, some mango, some kiwi, um, some coconut yogurt, some uh, granola, and some toasted uh, macadamia nuts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna get into it. Come on, man. There's <laughs> a lot going on in this shit. <laughs> Yo. You've got well, subtle sweetness mm -hmm. from the dragon fruit, but the mango does exactly what it's supposed to do with that mango flavor and the kiwi, and then that yogurt 
What what is that? You said it's a uh, coconut yogurt. Coconut yogurt, a little bit of sour to it, and then you did this this dragon fruit puree. Mm-hmm. I even a uh, the toasted macadamia and like. I like that. Yeah, you get that too. And then you get the the little chewy from the granola. Mm-hmm. Y'all, <laughs> I'm high and I. St- feel spectacular i feel spectacular that's the only uh one word description i can give you this food has paired amazingly well with this sf roots chocolatina strain euphoric is one of the words they use to describe how it makes you feel and yes i feel euphoric with that being said this has been another episode of the dope dank and dine podcast tap that subscribe button and click the uh, little bell alert thing next to it so you know when we drop new episodes because Chef Todd gets deeper and deeper in the bag every single week. Every week.